friends, welcome back to the Tournament of Stitches. This is section seven of the crochet version. I'm having so much fun working this project up together with all of you. Please continue to share with me on social media using hashtag Marley Bird and hashtag Tournament of Stitches because I love seeing your work in progress. By this point, my scarf looks a little something like this. So there's section one, two, three, it's getting rather long. And here's four. Here are five and six. Didn't those turn out so great? And yes, I've already begun section seven, which is what we are going to learn today. I have gone ahead and worked up, I guess this would be through row 34, where I'm getting ready to start row 35. And the reason I did that is because this row right here, this would have been row 11, is very similar to row 35. So rather than having you work through the entire motif with me here in the video, I decided I would jump to a point in the pattern that was very similar to how it began and work through the final rows of the pattern so that way you can get um, information on all the stitches we're using, nothing new there, get information on the technique we're using, nothing new there, and I guess generally just get any tips that might be handy along the way. So I've jumped ahead to do that. Hopefully you don't mind that. All right, so I'm going to talk to those of you who have not gotten started on the Tournament of Stitches yet. Can I ask, what are you waiting for? <laughs> this event is so much fun, and these mosaic stitches are highly addictive. I promise you, grab your hook, grab some worsted weight yarn, click that link right down there in the video description box below or on that little i button, and that will take you to the blog post for this event. In there, you will learn about what the Tournament of Stitches is. You'll see links to previous year's Tournament of Stitches. You'll find the list of materials you'll need. And at the bottom of the post, that's where each section is linked for the crochet version and the knit version. The sections are individually linked, so you can follow along. Um, would it be uh, consecutively? Yeah, that's the word. You can follow along with each section as you complete it and move to the next. So it's very um, bite-sized pieces that make this scarf such a fun project to work. Get started now, get up to section seven, and then join us back here for this video. Sound like a plan? All right, those of you who have started the Tournament of Stitches, I know you are jonesing just like I am to continue on with section seven. So let's go ahead, grab that pattern, grab your homework, and let's take a look at what we are going to work on in this video. Just as in other videos, I like to start off looking at the chart. To me, the chart is a great way for me to see what the stitch or the motif is going to look like once it's completed. And to me, I can see here, it kind of looks like a chevron happening here. So as I'm working my stitch pattern, if I'm starting to get this chevron type look, I can see that that is really working out. Just like before, we start off with rows one through eight, just as plain single crochets using color A. Rows nine and 10 are plain single crochets using color B. And row 11 is where the action really starts to happen here, okay? Now, as I mentioned, my swatch is already worked up through row, I guess it would be through row 34, and I'm getting ready to start row 35, which can you see how it looks virtually identical to this one? Can you see that? The difference here is this one down here doesn't have any double crochets that are worked below, but this one right here will have them right here. Let me look at the stitch diagram so that way maybe you can see it a little bit better. You can see right down here, let's grab the post-it note so that we can work on this together. So I am covering up everything above row 12. As we look at row 11, we can see we work across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We chain three, which means we're gonna skip two. We do a single crochet in the next two. Chain three, skip two. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, single crochet. Chain three, skip two. Single crochet in the next two. Chain three, skip two and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven single crochet. That is virtually the same 
as row 35 up here. So you look up here at row 35. If we ignore the fact that these are double crochets work two rows below, we could count those as just plain st single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was exactly what we had down here. So the only difference here is that because this row 35 is worked deeper into the fabric, we actually have these double crochets linking down two rows below, where down here we didn't have that. Hopefully that makes sense. That's why I've gone ahead and worked up until row 35 and that's where I'm gonna pick up my work today to work across. So hopefully that makes sense to you and you will be able to follow along without any issues. I guess the biggest piece of advice I would have is watch this video as I'm working through the stitches first. Then grab your homework and work along with me, um, starting down there with row, um, I guess that would be row 11, and see if you can work along uh, based on how I'm working up on row 35, just substituting single crochets whenever I'm doing those double crochets. You should get, should get it pretty easily, especially by this point in the project. So I am going to go ahead and move my post-it note all the way up here, because this is where I am. I am on row 35 and I'm going to begin working across this row. I already have color C ready to go because I changed colors at the end of the row. I just have to get my hook back in place. Look at all of this fabric. There's so much fabric that I have to make sure um, doesn't get in the way as I'm working along. But man, is that satisfying knowing I've done all of that fabric so far. All right, I already have my chain one completed, so I am literally jumping in to row 35. Hopefully you guys are ready to go as well. So this is where, if you were starting on row 11, you would be single crocheting seven stitches. But because we're on row 35, my stitch number two and three actually have to be dropped down as double crochets two, row, two rows below. And this is just like all of the other sections using the same technique. We're just following a new stitch pattern. Okay, so you can see my yarn is going to want to jump out at me. So that was one, two, three, and this would be four, five, and then it would be six and seven if you were on row 11, but because I'm on 35, I have to drop down here. So this would be my six, and my number seven. You with me so far? Can you see what I mean? So on row 11, this would just be straight single crochets across, but because we're deeper into the fabric, we have to do those double crochets two rows below. I'm sure you get what I mean at this point. You guys are very intelligent. So now I chain three, which means I skip two, and then in the next two, I will single crochet. So there's one and two chain three, skip two. This is where I would be single crocheting six, but my first two here have to go down here below. So there's one and two, three, four, five, and six. You see what I mean here? All right, so now I'm gonna chain three, skip two, single crochet in the next two, so there's one and two, chain three, skip two, and then this is where I would be single crocheting all the way to the end, after I skip those two, but see, I have to come down here and get these double crochets worked two rows below. So that would be one, and this would be two, three, four, five, six, and single crochet in my last stitch. So that would be seven. Can you see how it's very similar to row 11, only we have these long double crochets instead of just plain singles. 
but everything else is the same. So really row 36 is identical to row 12, right? It's identical. So I chain one, turn my work, and I will make sure to single crochet into the top of each stitch all the way down the row. Skip those. need a slip stitch instead of a single crochet and in this last stitch I will change colors just like always chain one and turn all right so we could take a look here a little piece of hair it's from Penny okay so we can see look at the chevrons that we're getting and these are just what I was talking about when we were looking at the stitch chart right we were looking at all of that chart you can see the chevrons really starting to take shape okay and as I grab my stitch diagram here and I move this up I am now on row 37 so I move that up I always move it up two at a time and I can see, I just work this as normal. Now at this point, I'm guessing you guys know exactly what to do, but I do wanna point out something. In this particular motif, one thing you will notice is you never do a chain two. All of the chains are always chain threes. That's because every time you do those double crochets, two rows below in this motif, they're always two double crochets side by side. That's what gives the kind of thicker chevron look, okay? So we get this nice thick chevron because they're always two double crochets side by side. So the biggest thing to remember with that is when you're working back along the wrong side row, don't forget that there are two double crochets out there in front of those chains when you're working back. Make sure you don't forget those, otherwise you'll come up short with the number of stitches you have. But knowing that they're always just chain threes makes it kind of easy with this motif because you don't have to think to yourself, am I supposed to do a chain two? Am I supposed to do a chain three? You know it's always chain threes, all right? So I'm gonna work through these last couple rows so we can see how this fabric looks at the end. And um, if you're at that point, work along with me. Make sure I have my color B is on my hook. I did my chain one already. I'm going to do a little yarn management here and away we go. So I start off with a single crochet in that first single crochet and in the next two. So that would be three single crochet, chain three, skip two, single crochet in the next two. So there's one and two. I have two double crochets, two rows below. Chain three. Skip two, two double crochets, two rows below. single crochet in the next two, chain three, skip two, single crochet in the next two, 
double crochet two rows below chain three skip two so one two double crochet two rows below single crochet in the next two chain three skip two single crochet in the next three oh, I just love the geometric nature of this entire technique it's so pretty all right as always I'm turning my work chaining one or chain one and turn it doesn't matter and I am just going to work my stitches into each stitch across and then chain three over my chain threes. The last stitch of the row, change colors. Turn your work. It's really starting to take shape and I can move my post-it note up. I'm on row, let's see, I just did 37, so I'm on 39 and 40, so I can block those. Oh, helps if you do it straight across, Marley. Well, there we go, <laughs> okay. Let's go here and make sure you're using color C. Chain one to start single crochet in the first stitch, chain three, skip two, double crochet, two rows below. So there's one and two. Chain three, skip two, single crochet in the next two, so there's one and two double crochet two rows below so there's one and two and single crochet in the next two so there's one and two chain three whoop two three chain two double crochet two rows below so there's one and two chain three Skip two, skip two, single crochet in the next two. So there's one and two, double crochet two rows below. So there's one and two, whoops, there we go. Single crochet in the next two. So there's one, two, chain three. Skip two, double crochet two rows below. There's one and two. Chain three. Skip two, single crochet in that last stitch. Okay, so that would be the end of row 39. Turn our work, work your way back on the wrong side row just as normal. Make sure you do that chain one and work back. change colors in that last stitch there and this will be the end of my color C so I am going to go ahead and snip it always leaving a nice long tail so I can weave that in hopefully you guys are doing what I suggest and weaving your ends as you go you don't want to wait to the very end of your project to do that that is daunting don't do that weave them in right now okay um, let's grab this Move that, and as we're working across here, all I need to do is just pay attention to whenever I come to those chain threes, and I have to do those double crochets right in front of them, and I should be done with this 
section. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. This section, like I said, it's definitely one of my favorites. I love the way it looks. All right, I'm pretty sure you guys know how this works going across, so I'm not going to talk too much. I say that now, but then I end up talking the whole time. <laughs> All right. Getting ready to do the last wrong side row, which is always so gratifying. It always feels like I'm on my way, right? Okay, so I'm all the way to the end. Look how pretty that is. Oh goodness, that's so pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna work my way back and then I'll be ready to transition to my color A to work this section right here. Uh, which is the first part of section eight. So if you are an overachiever and want to get that done before the section eight instructions are released, you can do that. Totally up to you. All right, look at this. Last stitch, I'll be transitioning to my color A, but I can go ahead and snip my color B right there. I'm just going to, I'm gonna put a marker in it and then I can go back and transition to my color A later. But let's turn our work, see what we got here. There you have it, you guys. Let's turn it right side so we aren't at an angle. There you have it. That is section seven. Isn't that just the coolest thing? I'm serious, I love this stitch pattern and it's so easy to create these chevron um, motifs, these chevron mosaic stitches without having to do an actual chevron with the increases and decreases. I think it looks really cool. All right, I can't wait to see your section sevens. Again, make sure you're sharing with me on social media. Add your picture to the Marley's Minions Facebook group. Add it to Instagram. Make sure you use the hashtag Marley Bird or hashtag Tournament of Stitches. That way I can see your project and smash your like button. If you're enjoying this event, please be sure to leave a comment below hit like, make sure you're subscribed to my channel so that way you can follow along whenever we do other fun events like this or when I do just instructional videos for how to follow along with other patterns or basic technique instructions for knitters and crocheters. I would love to have all of you here as subscribers. That would be great. That's it for this video. I'll see you at section eight. Good luck guys. Thanks so much for joining me on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've put a link right over there, or you can watch a couple of the videos I've already selected for you right down there. If you want to follow me on social media, I've put my links right over there. You can have all Marley all the time. Bye guys.